Hey everyone, so I want to take a few minutes and show you guys the frequency generator I've been using for Stan Myers research. I've had this one for I think nine or ten years now. I actually had a much more expensive unit uh, that I bought probably five years ago. I paid three hundred and sixty dollars for it but I never used it uh, because this one did everything I needed and it's lighter, it's cheaper, in case I had any high voltage spikes I don't worry too much about blowing this one up. So I sold the other one and this is all I use. It's pretty much all I have used for Stan Meyer's research uh, when I'm tuning on my own when I haven't used a PLL board. In the past I had, I think I've had two different replications of Stan Meyer's PLL board. The big problem there is you can't see the values you're your uh, your frequency, your duty cycle, and your amplitudes, and your sweep rate, or all that stuff. So with this, you can see all that. It's right here on the screen. You can program it. You can set it up to sweep different ranges and frequencies. You've got full control of everything. Both channels are independent of each other. So you use channel one. It has the sweep function. Obviously, that'll be the resonant frequency. And then channel 2 you can use for your gate frequency. I'll just show you a few of the things it does. First off, uh, the amplitude goes from actually 0.1 volt increments, or you can adjust it in higher increments, 0.1 volts the minimum. And then you can go all the way up to 20 volts peak to peak. So there you see i got a 20 volt peak to peak square wave. And like I said, the channels are independent of each other. I can go to the secondary frequency and put that at 20 volts as well, or less, whatever I need. I use them at 10 volts. That works with my drive circuits. Uh, next thing I was going to explain, the waveforms. So it's got a lot of different waveforms that might be helpful in Stan's work, um, such as the four poles. I mean, essentially, that's a gated uh, pulse train right there, and it's unipolar. Well, you can adjust it to make it unipolar. Show that next. Uh, you've got an eight pulse as well. You've got step, DC, and sine. So with your square wave, we know that Stan Meyer said you have to have a unipolar pulse for both your resonant frequency and your gated frequency. So all you do is you go to amplitude. Push it one more time, and there's your offset. Now you can see on channel one, I'll adjust that. And now I've got a unipolar pulse on channel one. Channel two, same thing. Go to offset. And there we go. Now we've got a unipolar pulse on both channels. Go back to channel one. And the duty cycle is adjustable on both channels from 1% all the way to 99%. There's the duty cycle there. So you can see I can go all the way down to 1% if I want. And all the way up to 99. And we'll say, you know, I'm say I'm operating at 83% duty cycle on the resonant frequency. My gate frequency will set that to 1 kilohertz. And say we want a higher duty cycle on that as well. I can adjust that without affecting the other channel. And there you see, and I can also make it smaller, whatever. So it's really easily adjustable. And with this, all you need is a circuit to combine the two signals and then the VIC coil primary driver. Uh, the next thing I was going to show is actually the sweep function. So let's go to channel 1. Right now we're at 10 kilohertz. If we want to scan from 10 kilohertz to 10.1 kilohertz, which is a 100 hertz range, we can do that really easily. So I'll put in 10.1 kilohertz and parameter actually menu you save that as the end frequency and then go to 10 kilohertz hit menu again and save that as the begin frequency now when I push sweep it gives me an option of linear 
or log sweep. What I found is that in linear sweep mode, the slowest you can scan is one hertz per second. But if you put it in log sweep mode, you can scan really, really slowly. So I can make it scan that 100 hertz over a time, a maximum time of 999 seconds. So I'll show you that. I'll go to sweep, put it back in log, and see. There's one hertz, two hertz, three hertz, very slow. So it works great for that. And if you want to sweep faster, uh, let's say you want to sweep a larger range as well. So what you can do is just go back to your frequency and let's say you want to scan from uh, 12 kilohertz so you'll save that as your end frequency, and then you want to scan down to, say, 9.8 kilohertz. Save that as your begin frequency. Go to sweep. Since it's a, a much higher frequency now, you can scan in linear or logarithmic. We'll just leave it in linear, and we'll say we want to do it in, let's say, 25 seconds. Hit sweep go. And now you can see 10.8, 10.9, 11 kilohertz, 11.1, 2, scanning much faster now. And what it'll do when it hits the 12 kilohertz, it just goes back to the start point and it'll continue scanning until you push that button. So, in my previous video I showed a drive circuit um, that I designed that has a variable amplitude pulsing during the gate time. Uh, I've redesigned that circuit. I'll probably share it in a future video. Right now it's just on a breadboard. Um, but that circuit actually provides variable amplitude pulsing during the gate time, like I said, and it's falling edge synchronized. So let me draw up on the board why that's important. Hold on one sec. Okay, so this is why it's important to have a falling edge synchronized um, circuit with Stan Meyer stuff. If this is my gate frequency, and these are my resonant pulses, the gate frequency ends here. If these aren't falling edge synchronized, it's going to cut that last one short. And then that's going to be essentially a different frequency. It's not going to be resonant at that point. And so it's going to throw the circuit out of resonance every time it gets to that last pulse. So you need falling edge synchronization. And my circuit will provide that. Um, like I said, I'll probably show it in a future video. And the last thing I designed into that circuit, um, I've got a huge clunky power supply. And I recently just bought a small one channel power supply. So I made it so the primary coil voltage is adjustable and it's independent of the voltage um, from the power supply. That way you can run everything off one power supply and I don't need my big bulky one all the time. Uh, so the circuit I designed will have those three features. Um, I don't know if I'll make it into a PCB if somebody wants to, that's up to them. Uh, right now, like I said, I've just got it on the breadboard and it's a thing, it's an issue of time. I really don't have a lot of time to design it and put it on a PCB and do all that work. Um, but I'll share that in the near future. So overall, this frequency generator works really well for Stan Meyer's research. It's got a few weird quirks about it, but once you learn how to use it, um, like I said, I, I actually sold my expensive arbitrary waveform generator uh, that cost me like five times what this one did because I just didn't use it. Uh, this one's so much easier to use and it's portable and uh, works great. So that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.